Chapter 25. You can't fake chemistry. Joshua never cared for scientists too much. When he dozed two minutes into the making of the Dark Universe at the Museum of Natural History, his daughter Matilda whacked him in the rib with her forearm hard with menacing disgust, prompting her do-it-all dad to yell in his defense, God only made Neil deGrasse Tyson interesting for two-minute bursts at a time. Albert Einstein helped make the atom bomb, which put an official end to World War II. The big one also resulted in make-out moments galore along the Canyon of Heroes on Broadway, honoring America's greatest generation and our last large-scale, big-deal military victory against a formidable foreign power cranked up on crystal meth pre-fake news before the era of HBO becoming must-see TV for more resistor-hued Nazi revisionist fictional TV series fair because she lost despite getting the debate questions in advance and for being the perpetual unhuggable cunt that she is. So Joshua didn't hate scientists altogether. Atheist know-it-all twats like Stephen Hawking didn't make Joshua warm up to bean breath British physicist either. But Obama gave Stephen Hawking the Presidential Medal of Freedom, despite the award being the highest American civilian honor possible. So Joshua must possess. So Joshua must possess a very low opinion of star fuckers from Kenya. But what really turned off Joshua from scientists, besides the computer ones, that being computer scientists who work for IBM to develop technology, which made it easier for the Nazis to identify his European Jewish ancestors before they were shipped off to death camps, was the dweeb brewer of Six Point Brewery in Red Hook, Brooklyn, who during the tour of his brewery touted himself as the improv chemist genius of hoppy amalgam fermentation. But back to IBM for a second. Joshua lived in Curtin Falls, New York, with his wife Anna and three kids, who would have been thrown into the gas chambers in Auschwitz. So knowing IBM had a major research and development facility in nearby Summers, New York, he was quick to point out IBM's Nazi profiteering past at the local brew bar upstairs at Italian grocery store De Chico's. If he overheard some IT folk talk about programming or coding of any kind and imposed his material on them, regardless if they were engaged in a dialogue prior or not, Joshua says, hey guys, this is my impersonation of a computer scientist at IBM testing the artificial intelligence of Watson, the supercomputer, who won at Jeopardy. Hey, Watson, are you aware of being named after the scientist Dr. Watson, who developed technology for the Nazis, who made it easier for the kraut press to identify Jews being shipped off on trains to slaughter? Watson computer replies, no shit, Sherlock. But... If you didn't know that, you probably didn't know Hitler had a framed picture of Henry Ford on his desk. Despite the Model T being a poor man's Mercedes-Benz, Hitler's preferred drive-by car of choice, climate scientist alarmist trying to give his three children eco-anxiety didn't inspire Joshua to embrace the scientific community at large either. On Joshua's debt comedy record, Resist This, he did a bit about imagining a debate on climate change between Trump and Greta Thunberg, which any NPR devotee believer would have a psychic meltdown over, his wife included, in a New York Minute. In the bit, Trump says, fracking reduces our carbon emissions, Greta. Greta says, so Neil Young is full of shit now? Trump replies, Neil Young doesn't take showers to reduce his carbon footprint, so that much you share in common, babe. Again, Joshua was waiting to meet with the rabbi's highly touted master brewer brother Schmendel. But this time, he was at the DBGB Kitchen and Bar on the corner of Bowery and Houston, which is easily confused with the CBGB Bar of yesteryear, when model turned singer, songwriter, ambient rocker Debbie Harry pleaded on stage to her latest hunk on a stick, Call Me, pre-smartphones, and Steve Jobs inventing nothing but Casual Friday. One time, Joshua's kids discovered a gift from Mama for Dada, including a pile of cue cards with typed written notes and heart and froggy stickers placed on them throughout, including loving homages in his honor, such as, I love the depth of your soul. I love the way I can't imagine a day without you in my life. I love how you kiss Blondie. After Joshua's nine-year-old daughter discovered this card in particular, she asked her, Dear Dada, who's Blondie, Dada? Dada replies, Easier on the eyes than the Ramones. Next question. Schmendel 
makes eye contact with Joshua at the bar, sporting the ascetic beard, a kappa, and rocking a fascinably bomber black leather jacket. Joshua gets up from his bar seat. Shmendel, it's a pleasure to meet you. Shmendel says, Thank God, another too tall Jew exists besides me. Joshua says, Growing up, my Jewish father from the Bronx would always give out. Joshua, why can't you have taller friends? And I'm thinking, because all of them are Jewish or Japanese American. Plus, you didn't ship me off for three whole months every summer to a big man basketball camp in Zaire. Schwendel says, what beer are you drinking? Joshua says, I like to try local beers because I'm obsessed with freshness. So I went with some IPA from Queens. But can we stop calling Queens hot? Compared to Manhattan and Brooklyn, Queens is the sloppy third Kardashian sister. You know, the extra greasy one, who's actually OJ's daughter, who's easy to pound at 3 in the morning, like a lamb gyro in Astoria. And I don't buy the fact Bruce Jenner, when married to Kris Jenner, was asexual. But I'm positive Bruce stayed harder longer after he convinced his wife Kris Jenner to cut her hair short so she looked more like a dolled up Ralph Macchio. And if I see Transgender Father's Day trend on Twitter one more time, I'm breaking my Chick-fil-A strike for good. Either you're an involved father or you're not nipple tits. Getting shafted shouldn't be such a shock to your system anymore either. Schmendel finishes laughing. You don't have many friends, do you? Schmendel says. Joshua laughs. Long time and says... The majority of my old ones are gone. That's correct, Schmendel. Apparently, certain fake news friends only like you when they can feel smug, superior, East Coast elitist in comparison. Schmendel says, join the club. You can't be a self-loving, Trump-supporting, funny man Jew in New York these days without being looked down upon like some blissfully ignorant, uninformed, degenerate Jew of the lowest, most deplorable order. Joshua says, so your parents... Hit you more than ever, too. Join the club. So, I need a mock cheese whiz for my do it all dad hero kosher cheesesteak truck. Can you help me? I know you're a master brewer, but I figured your background in organic chem, food sciences, and microbiology at John Hopkins University could figure out a killer recipe in no time. I've been stalking you on LinkedIn in case you're wondering. It's my old school IT recruitment agency background shining through. I can still help you come up with a killer viral campaign for your great American Jewish pale ale in exchange. Schmendel says, Joshua, take it easy. You had me at mock cheese whiz for my do-it-all dad hero kosher cheesesteak truck. I'm a father of seven myself. Joshua says, and I thought I was stuck up Schitt's Creek without a paddle. Joshua orders an IPA for his new Jewish brother in arms. Then Joshua raises his IPA glass for a toast. After Schmendel receives his beer and says, to meant to be chemistry. Like I am.